GT, looking fabulous, especially with its uh, matching panniers. So if you can tell us a bit about this bike, uh, what uh, has changed really since the model variant before it? The uh, main difference this year is the colour swap. Uh, you've gloss all over and uh, coloured wheels. Standard form, it comes without the touring package, uh, but we give it free of charge, which includes the oh, right, okay. sat-nav bracket, the comfort gel seats and the colour-coded panels. And so what other accessories or options are there on the bike? Other options are top box rear rack, a sat nav to go on the bracket, engine bars, Acroprovig exhaust, yeah. all the carbon fibre bodywork, wavy front discs, and all the orange <laughs> CNC orange um, <laughs> trinkets, master cylinder caps, anodised pieces. Long yeah. So actually, a hell of a lot. So what's this bike retail for in its standard form? 16.3. And what are the um, KTM finance options you've got at the moment? Uh, you can have PCP options uh, or standard finance at 5.9% APR. Oh, that's quite good actually. A lot of them are 9.9, uh, .9, don't they? So that's pretty good. Okie dokie. So, there it is. The KTM Super Duke GT. Oh, I'm really excited about going on this. We have top contender for my spondoolies on my shortlist it's right next to the Super Duke R so you can actually see the differences as in not a lot at first glance it looks like it's just got a different fairing front of course and the frame is pretty identical suspension is the same right? different front light and that is it the Super Duke R comes with the new TFT, but other than that, ooh, this is a beast, isn't it? Good Rufus. Well, technically, the Soup Duke R is the beast. So, so what should we call this, eh? Beast this? This, uh... Right, okay, let's start it up. Wishy wishy woogie. Oh, quite a bit of action going on there. Screen on the left, screen on the right. Roof counter flips up, few lights. Not quite Blackpool and Illumination Day, but not bad. Cool, blimey. Just come off the uh, 790. It's a bit louder, this. <laughs> Okay, so uh, sitting on it, I'm on the balls of my feet, uh, such as the genre of this bike. I'm not, I'm not on tippy toes, but I'm on the balls of my feet, reasonably comfortably. Um, just in mind, I've got a 30 inch inside leg, uh, 5 foot 10 tall, that's how I've got normal length arms. My arms are in a perfect position, I'm sitting quite upright as you'd expect. I've put the uh, windscreen up to its highest, anti buffeting, and that's how generally you'd probably ride it anyway. Unless you want a sports dash. Uh, good place to sit, not a lot of clutter, not a huge amount of buttons. The only one extra that you get above and beyond other bikes perhaps is the cruise control. It's on the right, unusually. Most bikes seem to have it on the left. That's the matters one jot. Well, it certainly sounds impressive. Just give this way for a change of it. The uh, quick shifter. Where is it? Ooh, it's quite light and alive. But it turns really quickly. Seats comfy. to the 790 <laughs> as you open it up it seems pretty similar and suddenly it hits a power point and off it goes <laughs> not even the fastest mode I mean barely one out of Super Duke R scared me I might not even put it on the fastest mode then again uh, see not to isn't it rude not to though. a 
nudge needed for the upshifter than on the 790, but that's generally kind of a lighter, easy flowing bike, so uh, that's probably what you'd expect. This bike looks great with panniers on, doesn't it? I mean, you take them off, I suppose, for the brass. Don't, don't put them on all the time. But actually, the bike looks really good with them on. And it sets the bike apart. People then realise it is, in fact, a sports tourer, not just a slightly large naked. Down the dears, reassuring little clunk. Dual carriageway, and find out what it's like at um, some higher cruising speeds, which is one of the points of the quite of course. Yeah, it helps you swell. You've got to have the speed on, it seems to stop nicely when you're on the gas, so to speak. The yeah, new vision is going to come out with the new TFT screen, it's going to change things, but as it happens, uh, the balance on this one is very good. On the left, you've got your kind of favourites, which you can set up. Shows you your distance, shows you your temperature, shows you the fuel range, fuel temperature, and the mode you're in, which is very good and very clear, and is perfectly clear in the sunlight, and the direct sun right behind at the moment. Uh, right hand screen's got the uh, fuel actual kind of blocks, and the engine temperature, let's change down a bit, slow down, and the time and the speedo. In the middle you've got the roof counter. I mean, and one could argue that caters everybody's taste. And in fact the perfect combination. But such is the way it is, everybody's going to a single flat TFT unit. I don't know if they make their own or there's a generic one out there. And uh, people are kind of branding it themselves, I don't know. But they are quite small and some of them seem quite cluttered and you have to fiddle around a bit to get some of the views you want. So uh, I mean, I'm not fussed if a bike doesn't have a TFT screen or not, but should I get a new bike, brand new, that's not this one, then it might well come with a TFT, so that's fine. Whatever. I'll tell you what, there's bugger all buffeting at uh, 30 to 40 mile an hour on this that windscreen, that's brilliant. Uh, you can probably get the old uh, hand protectors coming out over the brake levers, that might be an option. Um, not a great fan of them look wise myself, I've seen them on a big try and plenty of adventures and that. I'll tell you what I'm a bloody fan of, and that's quick shifting. Oh, marvellous. Let's go up here. Oh, just lost to me a bike skin. I <laughs> didn't realise. <laughs> As you hit 50, start, the wind starts to pick up, but it doesn't move your body back, you just hear it, that's all, which is absolutely expected. You actually expect it doesn't want to upshift when you're off the throttle. Well, 
to be the bunks of twisties round here or more importantly there might be but I'll never find them if I do I'm bound to be lost uh, but all of you I go round the roundabout and find the bend's already done I know this is an absolutely fantastic go around the old bends should you want to have a jolt if you want to have a speedy jolt in the burbs then uh, this will be very capable about three of these a day, it should be better. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I might even have passed a test that one. So it's got some generation in it. That's for sure. It's certainly got some beastly power. And it can really shift as you get out of the rev range. Of course it's not as much fun uh, as the 790 Duke which I just took out. That's to be expected. That's light and nimble and quite frenetic. So it's a lot more refined, which is really what you want in a GT anyway. seem happy being in the lower rev ranges in the high gears I mean that's true of everything of course but it's quite noticeable that's good to put into a lower gear and then you've got the uh, bit of acceleration anyway at your fingertips Beautiful day to be on a bike, isn't it? My God! So, um, the end of June 2018, that heat wave lasted over a week. It doesn't feel like 30 degrees right now, it feels about 28, but uh, it might pick up a bit. It's just kind of late morning for me right now. It's fine once you're moving, as motorcyclists like know, but once you're standing still, it's not funny. You want to quickly get your gear off. Did I miss it?
somewhere on the move without being shown how I've managed to get it into the uh, sport loop yeah that's pretty fast <laughs> oh dear I love the old motorbikes I just got it love them they're just completely different to cars you know, I've had some fast cars, you just quite can't replicate the dynamic nature of a motorbike. It's the feeling you get from your ass on the seat next to the road on two wheels vibrating your nuts off. And the sudden weight picks up and the wind hits you. Oh, marvellous. You'll hear the wind pick up and the buffeting, I won't be able to speak much, but let's see what it's like. the bike the wind buffeting speed is doing a great job actually and you can cruise at the uh, motorway speeds quite comfortably indeed so that's that test part Jesus Christ some massive bug splattered on my visor Not pretty. Skewing quite a bit of my left field of vision, so I'll just go and wipe that a bit later. Obviously, this video is edited, but I've been this bike quite a while now. Uh, it's really comfy. The seat actually is really comfy. I'm in a nice position. I don't feel there's any real stress on my body. My elbows are quite low. I'm well protected from the wind from the screen. So fatigue is going to be a lot less of an issue than it might be on others. All in all, very capable bike, and my god, put it in sport, squeeze that throttle. It's a damn fine and mighty fast bike. Now, I would be lost, but I got lost this way on the 790. So actually, you know I'm lost. I actually know where I am, that makes sense. Ah, only because I've been lost before a bit earlier. <laughs> Great sports tourer. Uh, do I prefer it to the BMW XR? Slightly less buzzy. Delivery is quite a bit different. Uh, oh, it's really close. It's, it really is a case of you really got to take them both out and compare them back to back to see which one you personally feel best on. Uh, which ticks most of your boxes might be a comfort sort of height issues and uh, but really not much cheaper to click comes down to looks which is fair enough that's what it's all about after all so I think we'll end it there this is Aid signing out thoroughly enjoying my time on a Super Duke GT so take care out there ride safe <laughs>